going well. Oh my God. Thank you. This is nice coffee event. <laughs> yeah, don't get used to it. Oh. I'm only doing it for the gram. Oh, thanks. <laughs> our coffees are small here. They're not like our enormous sizes in the United States. Let's start our day in Spain. Welcome to Penafiel, a tiny town about two hours from Madrid. If you're wondering why I'm even in this small town to begin with, back in 2010, I got the opportunity to teach English here in Penafiel at their primary school. I was placed with a family who spoke virtually no English except for the children. I've stayed in touch with the family over the years. The eldest son has come to visit twice. I've come back four times to visit. So this kind of feels like my home away from home. They very much feel like my Spanish family. And I've come to love this place so much and I'm so excited to be able to take you with with us just to experience the magic of Penufiel and see what it's like to live in a small village here in Spain. We are going shopping with Teresa this morning. She is their helper in the house. She helps make lunch while both of the parents are at work. So she's gonna show us around and see what it's like to shop here. This is something that's very different from the United States and a big part of daily living in Spain. First stop, bakery. <laughs> They're like all the same breads, they just adjust the size and things like that. The circular bread here is super typical for this area. They have it every single day for lunch. I haven't seen it elsewhere. I do think that's kind of like a special thing for this village. Can you feel, huh? Now we are going to the Carniceria. We got in trouble because we were trying to buy bacon to make them an American breakfast this weekend. It's Tuesday and oh my gosh, you would have thought the world was ending because you can't buy the fresh meat for three days from now. So we have to return on Thursday to buy the proper bacon. Hola. Yeah, we're just picking up a few items to make paella for lunch today. Our last stop is the Fruteria. This reminds me very much of Mexico. It's like a tienda that just kind of has a little bit of everything. Cat mm, Can't wait to eat one. They look really good, honestly. <laughs> Successful shopping day. Hasta luego. Everyone is closing, by the way, and it is 11.30. We had to go back to the panaderia to get some more pastries for breakfast. Breakfast is very light in Spain. Normally it's like pan con tomate, where they just kind of spread some tomato on top, a little bit of salt. They do have five meals technically in Spain. They have desayuno, breakfast, almuerzo, which is like a small snack in between breakfast and lunch, comida, lunch. Then they have merienda, which is like a post-lunch snack before dinner. And then you have cena which is dinner. They eat a lot. They say it's better. It's smaller portions aside from comida, lunch. That's your biggest meal. So we're just having pastries now filled with chocolate. It is delicious. And I just want to mention how lovely it is to have, like that was all a three minute walk from the house where we just did all of that grocery shopping. Four blocks max. Mm. <laughs> so oh. good. Finito, eh? Hazlo picadito. Okay, okay, okay. You're gonna be worth it. Oh, for paella, it's always worth it. Oye, Sofia, buen trabajo. Gracias. <laughs> Teresa is running around this kitchen like a mad woman. Today we are making paella. This is like probably the most typical traditional Spanish dish possible. I think it's their national dish. So to start, we have added chopped onion and pepper. She has cleaned lots of the seafood. We have squid, mejillones, which are mussels, clams, like actual whole fish that she cut up into pieces. And we have two different types of shrimp that she's gonna be adding. So she's opening up the mussels and the clams by steaming them, and she's gonna put them apart and then just add them to the paella when they're finished. And then she's taking seafood broth. Normally she uses homemade seafood broth, but she says the broth is the most important part. Chef, please. I know, I'm so excited. It is 103 degrees today here ah. in Penufield. Heat waves are real. Yeah, don't burn the house down. Yeah, I did just burn the towel. <laughs> So 
She's counting in her hands every time she puts it in, the portion for the number of people we're having. She normally does two handfuls per person. Y un poco más, just in case. Just yeah, in yeah, case. yeah. So she's added all of the broth, she added a little bit of salt to taste, and then we kind of stirred it a little bit. But now she's lowered the heat and we are going to let it sit and simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh that? my God, it's so beautiful. I'm but like, so excited. Seeing the bubbles and smelling it. And then she's going to add all of the other toppings on top, which would be the shrimp, the mussels, and right now she's adding the clams. Now she covers it for five minutes while she makes the table, and then it's time to eat. So for us right now, it is 3.30 and we're about to eat lunch. Although they do eat a little late in this household. We're gonna have wine, we're gonna have bread, pan we bought today from the panaderia. And then we normally finish off lunch with some fruit and then you have a pastry and some coffee. <sighs> Head to siesta. And yes, siesta is a thing here, still to this day. I think in big cities where you work in an office and you don't have time to go home, siesta isn't as big of a deal. But in the small villages where you work three minutes from where you live, you come home for lunch and you take like a 15 to 45 minute siesta. It could be on your couch, it could be in your bed, but you do take time to just chill and then you go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I just went to the Electrodomesticos Tienda and bought one of these bad boys. Whew. Oh, it's beautiful. It's Turn it on, please. Oh, yeah. Julia, mira que hemos comprado. <laughs> Moment of truth. Oh, there we go. <laughs> que calor, que calor. I'm gonna sleep so much better tonight. Think so? Yeah. I think so too. We've been in Spain for almost a week, but I'm still feeling jet lagged and having trouble falling asleep because of the six hour time difference from home. Plus it doesn't help that most homes here don't have AC and I'm not used to sleeping with traffic noise from open windows. So to help me get a more restful night's sleep, I've been taking nightcaps by Cured Nutrition. Cured Nutrition's nightcaps are full spectrum CBD and CBN paired with high quality MCT oil to help me calm my body and mind so I fall asleep faster. Nightcap's all natural hemp derived ingredients work together to have a more potent impact on my quality of sleep. Normally I toss and turn mind racing for at least an hour before I finally fall asleep. But on nights when I take one nightcap 45 minutes before hitting the bed, I fall asleep much faster and wake up feeling actually refreshed. I've tried so many other natural sleep aids, but this is the only one that truly gives me a consistently better night's sleep. Right now, Cured Nutrition is extending ETRV viewers an exclusive offer. You can grab your own supply of nightcaps for 20% off by clicking the link in the description below and using code ESRV when you check out. So whether you're headed out on a long international trip or just crave a deeper, more restorative night's sleep, Cured Nutrition's nightcaps will have you sleeping like you've never slept before. To make our siesta more comfortable, we're gonna close the persia which I wish more countries had this. I think it's one of the best things about Spain. They have these like blackout shutters and it doesn't let any light in. And here they have them automated. You just push a button. It gets dark when you put those babies down. We won't get it too dark in here or we'll never wake up from siesta. Yeah. <sighs> I love siestas. Tenemos que intentar... Pegarle otro sustito, eh. 14 minutos. Que se va. Sí, sí, se, sí, se hay va que, por hay arriba que, sí. con mucha alegría. Sí, para, para no cometer errores de, del pasado, incluso los dedos, y esto no tiene que ser ni mucho menos como la Eurocopa, pero. ¡Oh! ¡Ay! Last time I was here, they won the World Cup Spain for the first time ever, so they kind of think I'm like a lucky charm. It is the World Cup again for the women, they're about to win. If I'm here both times they win World Cup, I mean. You gotta come back every year. I have to come back every time. 13 minutos, pero tío, pero de qué va? Vamos, vamos, vamos. Vamos. Pero pensamos que no has perdido tanto tiempo como If you're like us as Americans, football is not a way of life. It is absolutely a way of life here. Their team that they love the most is Vital League Pucela. We've gone to a game in the past. It is so much fun. It's such a vibe. Pero si se la pasa por debajo las piernas. The emotion is next level. No, 
puede ser, tío. No puede ser que vayan a tenerla. Ya está. The finale, they won. ¡Eh! Hey, ¡Vamos! Perfect excuse to come back. I'm the lucky charm. Ahí lo reina. With everyone else working, we thought this would be a perfect time to show you around the castle of Penafiel. It is very iconic for this region. Not every small village in Spain is lucky enough to have a beautiful castle like Penafiel does. Obviously for like a day in the life video, the Spaniards are not visiting these castles every day, especially if they lived here. But it is something that is so unique to this area that we of course just had to show you. But it is absolutely mind blowing to me that we can walk in a castle that has been here for like 500 years since the medieval times. The construction of Penifiel's castle began in 947 AD. It served as an outpost and defense against the Moors, who invaded and occupied Spain for nearly 700 years. The castle was later expanded by the nobles who resided here, creating the castle we see today in the mid 1400s. A lot of stairs. <laughs> they must have been fit back then. <laughs> Hollywood likes to say that they threw hot oil over the sides to defend themselves, but that's just not true. Oil would have been really expensive and hard to come by. What they would have thrown was hot water, rocks, the innards of animals, animal poop, pretty much anything disgusting or heavy to try and deter them. I can't even imagine being here during this time. This would have been such a brutal, brutal period to live. I mean, it's so hot, you had to be in armor all the time. You would poop in a hole down the side of the stairs in front of everyone. The tour is in Spanish, so if you don't speak Spanish, it is a little bit difficult. I'm not sure if they have English speakers here, but it's still worth it just to even get to see inside the castle from this long ago. It's very, very, very cool. There's also a wine museum inside. Our tickets in 2023 when we're visiting were around seven US dollars per person, and it's about an hour guided tour. They do have weird hours because of siesta time, so make sure to check that before visiting. The views of Penafiel are absolutely stunning from the castle. That is one thing I absolutely love about small villages. It's not just exclusive to Spain, really all of the small towns in Europe are just as romantic and charming. I think it's so easy to take that for granted as a European because it's like the norm. But for us as Americans coming to visit here, it is so magical. Penufiel is a really small town. It's home to less than 10,000 inhabitants year round. But this is what a lot of Spain looks like. People mostly know Madrid, Barcelona, Sevilla, Cordoba. And those are absolutely stunning, amazing mega cities. But I love this rural side of Spain. To me, it's like a perfect mix of modern living with a slow paced quality of life. I feel like things just happen differently here. In the evenings, after they finish with work, they go out for a walk. They just take a stroll, no matter what your age, you'll see abuelos and abuelas out here, toddlers with their parents before dinner. It's like right now, it's about 9 p.m. and we're going for our evening stroll. Although, I just talked to Julia and she said it's a little bit early for it because the sun's still out and it is very warm today. They do this more in the summer than any other time just because it's more favorable weather. But I love that about Spanish culture, the evening walks. I feel like people are just outside enjoying life more. You're not inside just watching TV all the time and just with your like family group. They're always meeting with their friends. It's a lovely way of living. Pedro is the chef. He made such a beautiful dinner. Now it's like 10.30 and we're sitting down to eat. And it's a very light meal. We have a beautiful tomato salad with his burrata. burrata. And then we have eggs filled with tuna, mussels, acituna, and un poco de mayonesa. Y también una ensalada. Wow. Y tomate. Y tomate, claro. <laughs> wow. She told them that we were going to record for for YouTube and they were like, okay, get beautiful. And they were all looking in the mirror fixing their hair. It was a super, super fun experience. And there is a whole crowd of girls just staring at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> for this being a tiny town, there's a lot of traffic right now, I just want to mention. Hola, ¿qué tal? <laughs> Hola, ¿qué tal todos? Un beso desde España. Oh, that's so big so kiss sweet. from Spain. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya.